Welcome to Hunt to Eat's Community Kitchen. My name is Michael Cravens. Today we are taking a very underutilized cut of meat, the shank, and we are going to turn it into a fall off the bone, tender, rich, delicious Italian dish called osobuco. Stick around and I'll show you how. All right, so this is everything you're going to need to pull all this together. Let's start with a good Dutch oven. You're going to use this for braising everything in. Then we got some flour, we got some parsley. We got lemon for zest, garlic, onion, a cup of red wine. Here we got some stock, black pepper and salt, celery, carrots, mushrooms, any kind. Then we have lard or you can use vegetable oil, tomato paste, crushed tomatoes, oregano, and then finally some twine to hold your shanks together. All right, let's get rolling. All right, first step, these are elk shanks and we're gonna use some twine, some scissors here. And don't overthink this, we're just gonna tie these together so they don't fall apart when they're cooking. This meat is gonna get so tender, it'll literally wanna fall off the bone. And if we don't have it bound up, that's exactly what's gonna happen. We wanna keep these together so they look nice on the plate. And once you got your shanks all tied up, just give them a good liberal application of salt. Make sure you get all the sides too. Next, preheat your range to about a medium high heat and heat up that Dutch oven. Add about, oh, I don't know, a large tablespoon of lard uh, and our vegetable oil and let that melt and come to temperature. Now we're gonna take our shank rounds and we're going to dredge them in flour so we can move them over to our heated up dutch oven and brown them up real nice now when doing this you want to give uh, each shank i'm only going to do two at a time here i want to give them plenty of room if you crowd them in there they're just going to start steaming and that's not what we're looking for what we're looking for is a nice crispy brown exterior so go ahead and let those go until they release from the bottom of the pan easily our Dutch oven in this case, and they have a nice crispy exterior like we talked about earlier. Um, you're going to want to do both sides, obviously, and then you're going to want to flip them up on their sides and, and do those portions as well. So, and keep doing that until you have the whole thing completely browned and looking really good. After those shanks have been browned, we're going to set those aside and turn our attention to our vegetables. We're going to start with our uh, carrots and our celery. Then our onions, our mushrooms, our garlic. And then we're gonna give this a, uh, a good stir, saute it till those onions become nice and translucent. Then we're gonna put a nice hole in the center. And uh, you know, I got this, this part from the Meat Eater Fish and Game Cookbook by Steve Rinella. And we're gonna put a clump of tomato paste right in that hole we made. Then we're gonna let that caramelize. And you'll know it's starting to caramelize because you'll smell it and I think this adds, adds a lot of flavor and richness to the dish. So once that has caramelized and become aromatic, go ahead and mix it in with all your vegetables. Next, we're gonna add our cup of red wine. You can use white wine here as well. Then give that a little stir. Then we're gonna add about two cups of stock, a large can of crushed tomatoes, our parsley and our lemon zest, some oregano, a couple tablespoons, black pepper to taste then give that all once again a good mix now finally let's add our shanks we're going to nestle all four of these bad boys in where they're nice and close and comfortable submerge them down into that sauce place your lid on and then put them in a 300 degree oven these are going to braise for about four hours so here we are a full four hours later. Now, if these were veal or some other domestic meat, they may not have taken the full four hours, but you know, this is, this is elk. These are lean wild animals and it takes a while to break down that uh, connective tissue. But you're gonna see here that this meat is so tender, I can't even pick it up with these tongs now. Uh, this didn't work out at all and I gotta resort to a spoon. And I like to serve this over risotto. Um, it's a great way to serve it. You can serve it over regular rice if you like, but there's something about that creamy texture of risotto that just goes so well with this. I like to take and place my osobuco, my shank, on top of that risotto and then spoon that sauce all around, and that sauce is really where it's at. 
So as you can see here, this is not the most beautiful presentation, but you get the idea. Uh, top this off with some good Parmesan cheese, um, a little parsley, and don't forget to utilize that slug of bone marrow. That stuff is delicious. You won't regret it. So there you have it, Osabuco. Enjoy.